Welcome back. So if you remember last time, Jeff was in the process of laying up this uh, lower cowling extension. So here it is um, with the bag removed and the peel ply and such. So ready to be um, released from the mold. And here's Devin uh, just working on uh, cleaning up this one mold that was created there for those upper straight flanges. And on Wednesday evening, I ran the engine again. Here you can see uh, it's just in the process of warming up again. And uh, this time I've got that uh, extension there into that uh, drum uh, for the cooling fluid or wa water that's running through um, that heat exchanger. And there you can see things are just sort of slowly warming up there. And the purpose of this heat exchanger is just to test out the whole process. Um, water obviously has about four times the thermal transfer of what uh, diesel does. So diesel's not going to warm up as quickly and it's not going to take as much um, heat away from the engine as what we need but anyway we're just looking for a little bit more uh, cooling from the diesel system once it's all hooked up in the tanks but also at the same time warming the wings and just keeping the diesel from gelling so there you can see this thing actually works really well um, and uh, I was able to get the engine you know to come up and just basically maintain almost a stable temperature while it was running at 2600 rpm that's pretty good for only having a tiny little uh, radiator there but I'll show you more of that in a second and so here's a close-up look in the MoTeC software of that whole run and you can see it was about 30 about 32 minutes that I had it running for and, and about 20 something of that um, was where it was at the 2600 rpm so here you can see where it's ramping up uh, the throttle pedal there goes you know obviously from 0 10 20 percent and I bring it um, up you know through 25 30 and ultimately up to 42 percent and i just kind of left it there and uh, that sort of gave me in that engine rpm around 2600 rpm and, and what's interesting about this you see this point here that's where i turned on the the um the cooling there through the uh, heat exchanger and you see it dropped the water temperature a lot and it's actually slowed uh, the the uh oil temperature from um, you know getting too high and the oil temperature only reached about 209 altogether so it was, and actually, st I think we'll still keep climbing up. And what ended up happening was um, the uh, drum full of water actually got to a point where it was getting pretty hot, and I think it's it was pretty heat soaked. So if I'd run it for any longer, I think it would have not been as efficient. So ultimately, you know, when it comes to time, when I want to run this thing for an hour straight or longer, I'm probably going to have to have a separate drum out there so I can switch between one drum and the next. But uh, anyway, you'll, I'll, we'll talk about more about that later when that comes time. But anyway, I'll just show you a little bit more of the software here. How you can go through uh, the various screens here, and uh, it's good to see that there's no real surprises in here. Everything looks fairly smooth. And um, here, this is where you actually set the amount of fuel that's delivered per the throttle percent, um, throttle pedal percentage, and that's how I have it set up right now. So you can adjust that if you want to sort of you know vary the throttle. Um, and probably later on I'll have to make some more adjustments in that once we can run the prop up to a high, higher RPM. Um, so anyway, it's pretty cool to have all this um, ability to look exactly how the engine's running and be able to make adjustments and things like that. So this is uh, here showing um, the timing uh, for the fuel delivery. And there's no real surprises on the fuel timing uh, chart at the very bottom there. So um, and it sort of indicates that everything's running smoothly and likewise here on the fuel mass graph so this is basically a bunch of different uh, parameters here that show you know fuel delivery and and things related to that and again I'm just looking for anything that looks out of place um, because you know I'm, I'm not like an expert on all this stuff right now um, to me if it looks smooth and it sounds and it's running smooth um, then everything's sort of fairly much on track you know ultimately I'm going to get the MoTeC guys back to have a look at this and uh, see if there's anything that they think looks out of place or at least have them log in remotely and have have a look at it but I'm waiting until you know we have the prop uh, issue sorted out where I can really run it up to high power settings um, so again this is um, this particular one here is the fuel mass limit and uh, we're not getting anywhere near the limit right now that's been set only only hit 38 on that one and it's set to 100 right now um, so uh, and this is the just some information on the injectors there uh, I guess timing and uh, the amount of fuel that's being injected uh, but ultimately uh, everything looks pretty smooth on here so I'm pretty happy with um, how it's running and I'll get to run it more uh, once I'm back from uh, 
my vacation in the here you can see uh, this is one of the neat features you can sort of um, zoom in on one particular area there if you need to and you see this is just in the area there from the ninth, ninth to the 13th minute and then you just press F2 again and you go back to the full run and you see you just double click there and stretch out and click again and that shows you zoomed in on that area so it's super nice to be able to analyze all this stuff but there's nothing really um, standing out here that's worth sort of talking about like Ooh, what what's that you know it's all nice and smooth um, so the next step again with the engine is just getting that uh, those seals um, that we're waiting to get delivered which will be sort of late in January and then uh, getting those replaced in the uh, reduction drive and then from there um, be able to run it up to higher power settings and higher RPMs and uh, see if we find any other problems um, with it but other than that everything's running super smooth with the engine and um, no leaks which is good and this is that lower cowling piece um, that you saw earlier so that's just been test fitted into place now and that kind of closes out the baggage compartment obviously the openings for the baggage doors where it wasn't sprayed in primer there those haven't been cut out yet but that they will be cut out eventually and you see how that sort of fits around the firewall there and ultimately we have other lower cowling and then the two upper cowlings um, that will close that out and here are the plugs for um, these uh, the elevator uh, skins so those ones got their first round of primer on there still more to do uh, they need a little bit more fill and stuff before they're ready to do the molds but the guys have uh, gone and pulled all the uh, molds out for all the ribs the ones that we did a while ago and uh, sort of starting a marathon now to get all those ones uh, laid up and created uh, so there's Zach just masking off one of the ones there putting the the tacky tape on there and so these ones all have the tacky tape and then some masking tape over those so um, they're ready to uh, and you know they've all been waxed and stuff already before so uh, they're just ready to have a little bit of core cut for them and then uh, the, the material cut and then they uh, can be done can be laid up and as you can see there are rib molds everywhere so um, there's quite a few to do I think there was 60 altogether when we first did them there's still a few more that need to be actually created but these are all the main ones that make up the wing and the strake so you can see Zach's just fitting a little bit of this core just putting a bit of quarter inch foam core in in all of them to um, add the st uh, structural rigidity that you need in there so just creating a quick pa paper template and then uh, cutting the uh, core out of the foam and then just doing a little bit of trim to make sure it fits nicely in there and these are these doors that close out the uh, rear pressure bulkhead and, and uh, Jeff added a couple more layers of carbon on those to sort of beef them up and the reason for that was we're going to use uh, fewer fasteners to actually bolt them into the rear pressure bulkhead so we needed to make them heavier and uh, a bit thicker otherwise we would have had to have like 30 something um, bolts through them so instead of that we're going to have about 16 which is much more manageable and here's a slightly different perspective on that lower cowling piece and uh, just so you can see how it looks and those areas that are aren't that aren't primed there that's the openings for the baggage doors and they'll be cut out uh, minus a little bit of a flange around the edge and lastly I pretty much made my goal of trying to get m the majority of the avionics wiring all done before um, the break before my vacation and so here you can see I've got it um, I'll just show you the last few things that were wired up. You saw you this last time that was the gear handle um, and the three uh, LEDs. And uh, here you can see I got the avionics switch on. I put the backup um, battery master switch on, which is what you're going to actually have to do when you run it. So you, it's constantly sitting there in case the main battery drops below a certain voltage. The backup battery will automatically be online and pick up the slack. Um, so anyway, I got all all of the main uh, wiring runs all done, and everything's talking to each other. And you see, you know, I've got the transponder hooked up in there, and that displays in there. Um, and I've got you know all the different configurations with the RS two thirty two serial communications and Ethernet communications going on there. You can see that's the that's the second com radio that um, that's accessible there, and uh, you can you know go through and obviously you've seen before but um, you know a lot of this stuff isn't showing up because I don't have any an antennas hooked up yet there's the vertical power system that you saw before you can see running 12 amps with everything turned on there right now and booting up and I think once it's all up and running it drops down a little bit uh, lower to maybe about 11 amps 
And on the 750 here, you can see uh, there's an audio panel, so it's talking to that GTR 20, which is a backup radio as well. So you've got two different com setups in there, and the NAV radio, and there's you know all these different screens that you can use in here to set everything, flipping the frequencies there, which you can actually do um, from the side sticks as well. Um, and I'll tell you more about that uh, later on. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool that I got most of this stuff done. I'm pretty happy. You know, it took me about four weeks to do all that, and it wasn't like I was working on it full time because I was doing other things like you know creating toolpaths and running the machine and working on stuff for the engine as well. So I actually got through it fairly quickly. And there, there's still a bunch of tidy up stuff to do and a few things that I haven't done yet. And I've still got to put all the backing plates on all the connectors and stuff, but they won't take long. Uh, there you can see the two different volt things there: main and um, emergency M and E. And uh, so the main ones here running about 12 volts and the other one's about 14 right now. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty happy to have that all set up. Yeah, this is a, again sort of the, the main engine screen. That's all we have right now. There'll probably be more later on, but you know, we've got that MoTeC screen that's going to have all the engine information on it as well. And ultimately, I'd like to sort of move it over so it, uh, it's accessible through the Garmin uh, avionics. But the MoTeC has so much more stuff and there's just not even support for all that. Uh, in the Garmin stuff at this time you can only have a limited number of display gauges and things like that So all in all I feel pretty comfortable about taking some time off now that that's all sorted out and let the guys Do what they do best in the back of the shop there while I'm away and I've tasked uh, Zach with taking some video um, During the course of the week and uploading it to Dropbox for me, so I'll be able to uh, produce videos um, for you guys uh, while I'm away and uh, hopefully that whole process works out fairly smoothly and uh, you know I don't want to have you guys sitting around for three weeks without having anything to, to watch <laughs> I'm sure that would be a bit uh, a bit much to take when you've seen all this progress happening recently um, so you know, while while I'm away the guys will be working on getting all those ribs laid up and uh, working on also I think Jeff's going to uh, lay up the skins for the strakes so they're getting close and there's still a few things we're waiting on before we can finish everything up for the fuselage so we can get that post cured um, Mark's still trying to make a couple of decisions on the door lock um, attach points on for the lower hooks and uh, but we're trying to sort of get that finalized and I haven't shown you as well but Mark's been f pretty busy working on uh, the rudder pedal design for us and he's pretty much got that finished so that's one of the things I'll be working on when I get back um, cutting the materials for that and getting those all welded up. And finally for everyone celebrating Christmas over the weekend, I hope you have a great Christmas and uh, spend time with your family or whatever. And uh, until the next time, uh, thanks again for watching.